Welcome back to the second Nike Team Nationals at the Portland Meadows Racetrack. The girls competition just about to get underway. The 20 top high school aged girls cross country teams in the nation. Sometimes the start of the race is the most nerve wracking due to the anticipation and the start of the gun. So most of these girls are going to be jumping up and down waiting for that gun to go off. And with fireworks overhead, off the girls go. And Shalane, you know, this course, muddy as it was for the boys' race, has been chewed up even more. That's going to make it even more difficult for these young ladies. Definitely. And some of these girls are going to want to get out in front because, you know, with all that back kick, most of these girls aren't going to barely be able to see. So some of these girls are going to get out front and kind of uh, mow their own path. Shalane, there are a lot of people who thought that last year's Saratoga Springs girls team was the best high school cross country team in history. They won the Nike team nationals by 70 points. They placed four girls in the top 12. Once again, they come in undefeated, but they lost their number one ranking in the final week. You think they're vulnerable? Um, you know what? They definitely have been the benchmark for success. And even when they win, they're still sometimes penalized by not winning by a larger margin. For example, when they won the New York State meet by only one point over Hilton, and because of that, they were moved back to number two behind Newport Beach in the national rankings. Last year, nobody thought Saratoga Springs could be beaten, and they won easily. This year, about four or five teams have the opportunity. And one of the reasons is the two top girls from Saratoga last year are not on the team this year. They still go to the school, but they're not running on the school program. And if they had those two girls who were first and third at last weekend's Foot Locker Northeast Regional, they'd be untouchable again, but that just brings everyone back into the mix. Yep, they definitely have been the hallmark for uh, their depth. Right now, Annie St. Jem from Newport Beach. She's in the black leggings and the headband and the armbands, and you can tell she's from California. She is freezing. And everyone else who's from this region or from the Northeast and the Midwest thinks it's good running weather. Well, not good running surface, but not bad running weather. Uh, I think that's Lindsay Ferguson moving up towards the front pack there. She's on the left of the screen with a flapping blonde ponytail. She's from Saratoga. She's the co-number one along with Hannah Davidson. We expect them to both finish in the top ten. Also in there, we've got two runners from the Carroll Cross Country Club, Miranda Walker and Brooke Upshaw, who we featured earlier. And you can just see the mud just working its wonders on these girls. A couple of Hilton Cross Country girls are also right down there in the top five with Carolyn Schultz and Allison Sawyer. It's Lindsey Ferguson, who's the high school record holder at the steeplechase, now going to the front along with Annie St. Jim, whose mother, Cece Hop St. Jim, was a Kinney High School Cross Country champion and then an All-American at Stanford. So she's got the bloodlines. Let me ask you this, Shalane. Yeah, the girls seem to be more strung out than the boys. Is that a product of the conditioning as they go over the whoop de doos for the first time, or why do you think they're strung out more than the boys were? You know, potentially, um, that's the reason is the conditions. Um, you know, might be that the men just, you know, have a little bit more depth this year. Just from year to year, things change. But up front, we've got, there's Hannah Davidson just passing the number two girl from Saratoga. And I think all these girls basically know who their competition is from a team standpoint, but I think they also read the the chat boards online and they know who the other individuals are that they have to cover for their team to win. Definitely. I think uh, websites like Diestat have been a huge help and you know some of these teams have never faced each other till today but they've been able to keep track of each other through the year over the internet. So they know who each other are. Betsy Bees from Yankton 3D running moves into third place behind Ferguson and St. Jim. We see our one kilometer Hilton with 61 points. That's a very strong performance as we look on the right side with the two kilometers coming ahead. But look at that, four, five, eight. They've got three in the top eight. That's power running. Hilton seems to be getting out pretty strong right now and maintaining a position. Saratoga in third at 141, and it's Yankton 3D in second at 138. So it is a huge lead for Hilton. They're ranked number two in the Northeast, but number three nationally. And they've opened with a bold first kilometer in Portland. We'll see if they can back it up right after this. We're back at the Portland Meadows racetrack for the girls part of the Nike Team Nationals Cross Country Championships. Tony Revis along with Shalane Flanagan. First time over the hay bales, Shalane. The boys went down, a couple of them did, and so far the girls are all making it through unscathed. Up front, Betsy Bees in the red headband from Yankton 3D out of South Dakota. 
Annie St. Jim, Newport Beach, California, and Miranda Walker and Brooke Upshaw from Carroll in third and fourth. And Carroll is one of the leading teams in this team competition, but there's Amanda Griggs from Hilton. She's in eighth place, and she's quite a scorer. Definitely. She's, I've seen her this weekend. She's been walking around on crutches. Um, she's new, usually their number one runner, but um, she's been plagued by sh some bad shin splints and I think a strained foot muscle. So she's definitely plugging through for her team today. You know, she's normally up with this crowd right here, but she is back in eighth place, the third Hilton runner. They're going to need her to try to secure this title because they're not deep in sixth and seventh position. They have five very strong runners and they need every one of them if they're going to score big and get on the podium. Now we're looking at two Hilton runners in black, Shelby Herman and Ashley Jones. Next to them, a Saratoga runner on their left, Sandra Gudos, who is, looks like they're, she's their fifth runner. Right, and they're sort of fighting back and forth. And these, these teams, Hilton and Saratoga, have raced against each other twice this year. Saratoga's won both times, but it's been close both those times. The difference right now is the third Hilton runner, Amanda Griggs, is in eighth, while the third Saratoga girl, Ashley Campbell, is in 26th. And that's an 18-point swing right there in favor of Hilton. Back up with our leaders. And it's still Betsy Bees, South Dakota two-time state champion, Annie St. Jem, who led her Newport Beach team to the California Division III title, and Miranda Walker and Brooke Upshaw of Carroll Cross Country. Lindsey Ferguson, then of Saratoga, behind them. And now we see the 2K results, and Hilton still in the lead with 88 points. Second place is Saratoga. Third, Carroll with 153 and a surprise Naperville, Illinois, up in fourth and 156. Saratoga has picked up 14 positions on their own, while Hilton lost 27, so streaks are really coming on strong. As is Naperville, Illinois. They were ranked 20th in the November 23rd poll. Their leader, Shannon Phelan, is in ninth place. She's been gaining strength all season long, and as she goes, so goes this team, and they're having a great day today. Boy, there goes a Yankton runner. Going down and going down hard. That's Tiffany Leader. As Bees and St. Jem are putting distance on Miranda Walker and Brooke Upshaw, and they're going shoulder to shoulder, not one right behind the other. They're fighting. They're fighting for position. They want the best ground underneath their feet, and you know they're kind of running into each other. They're definitely very competitive girls, you can tell. And now we've got Cassandra Gudos, small girl with the white front from Saratoga, fighting with Herman and Jones of Hilton. And they've been shadowing one another all race long, just like Hilton's been shadowing Saratoga all season long. And the girls just passed the three kilometer mark. And it's Hilton cross country with 89 in first. Saratoga 116 in second. Carroll cross country third. And Naperville in fourth. Hilton is maintaining their position. They are not fading. They have three in the top 11, and they're not backing down. Now, besides my two broadcast partners, Shalane Flanagan and Bob Kennedy, many of the top Nike athletes are on hand, including former Stanford standout Lauren Fleshman, who gives us her insight. I think the toughness of East Coast kids and um, that have had to deal with winters and uh, a lot of mud, they might have an advantage over some California kids like I was, you know, California high school kid, and I wouldn't have been too <laughs> experienced on this sort of terrain. But California kids have their own things going for them, and that they've been racing later into the season and um, stacked up against higher competition, deeper fields all year long. And um, so I don't know. I mean, West Coast, East Coast, Midwest. I don't. I don't know. Let's see how it shakes out. You never know what kind of mud runner you are. <laughs> We'd well, expect Saratoga to be good mud runners coming from upstate New York. They picked up another nine points in that third kilometer, but they need to pick up more territory. Because as you said, Hilton is not fading to this point. But we still have two kilometers left. Here's Upshaw going in front of Miranda Walker, the two Carroll Cross Country runners from South Lakes, Texas. Lindsey Ferguson. And over the whoop-de-doos, which they stretched out more this year, Shalane, from last year. They were more compact and a little bit more difficult. I think when you get your momentum going, sometimes it's hard to recover and get back up that hill again. So I think by spacing them out gives them a little bit more time to recover and get back up that next hill. You know, I've been surprised. These girls have just been battling shoulder to shoulder for the last couple of kilometers, and there's no, no back off in either one of them. You start looking for the better line. You're actually looking down and trying to figure out what's a better place with less mud. Yeah, sometimes, you know, the shortest route isn't always the best route. Sometimes you want to look for the better footing to get the advantage. Both these girls are champions 
from South Dakota, Betsy Bees from California, Annie St. Jem. And here come, there's about a string of about six or seven girls in a row. And this is the kind of thing, Shalane, where if you could just win that race within the race, you could pick up six or seven spots for your team. And that's where, maybe where the team championship lies. Now, Shalane, the top two New England teams are 1-2 at this stage in the race. The number one team nationally, Newport Beach, lies in seventh position. Are we surprised by this? You know, not really. The California boys um, play six and seventh. I think, you know, New England has an advantage. They're used to the conditions, whereas the California teams are just not used to it. And maybe we're seeing an example of that right now as Betsy Bees from Yankton 3D Running has made a move just before four kilometers on Annie St. Jam of Newport Beach. We'll see how it plays out right after this timeout. I was standing in that box. Telling myself, I belong here. I've worked for this. You just feel your heart pounding. When that gun goes off, instincts take over. You're going tree to tree. Stay focused, keeping the pressure on, keeping the pressure My on. My heart is pumping really fast. And the crowd is going crazy. I remember making a real bold move. It just blew the race wide open. You just see that tape coming. Keep running and don't look back. It's solidified in my mind that I can compete with anyone. The 2005 Nike Team Nationals are brought to you by Dystat.com, the internet home of high school tracking cross country. And Betsy Bees, Yankton 3D running, looking to become the second Yankton 3D runner. Oh, she goes down over the hay bales. Her legs are getting awfully tired right now. And you just get the, the, the adrenaline rush on a fall like that, knowing somebody's close by. She didn't turn around. What do you think? No, she, she knows she's got it. Um, even though she fell, she knows that if she just gets back up, like you said, the adrenaline rush will just give her enough to power home. Remember, Ramsey Cavan from 3D running won it last year. That's just extraordinary in a state that has only 754,000 people in the entire state. And they're going to put two, two champions back to back. I think it helps to have that leader and someone in front of you, um, you know, from a previous year to just set the set the standard for you know the rest of the team. Well, there's Hilton Cross Country is number 264. Carolyn Schultz, their number three runner, and she's just working. You can see how exhausted she is. Darn hay bales. <laughs> what they put them there for. And Newport. Oh, there's a Newport girl. She goes down, and you can just see just, just no lift left in her legs. And when they go down, they, they skirt the last one, saying I've already paid my penalty. Miranda Walker, Brooke Upshaw, three and four in the race, both from Carroll Cross Country. And here comes Betsy Bees. She's gonna win it for Yankton 3D running. Right behind. Annie St. Jim, a great run for Newport Beach. Here comes Miranda Walker and Brooke Upshaw. Longtime friends, great partners. They're both on their way to the University of Arkansas next year. That's two in for Carroll Cross Country. And there's Lindsay Ferguson of Saratoga Streaks. And now the pain, as the pain mounts, the pressure mounts as well. And all these girls know that every place counts. Here's the Saratoga, bunch of Saratoga streaks coming in right now. They had a lot of room to make up. Unfortunately, I don't think they've made up enough room. I think they just got out a little bit too slow, and uh, Hilton was just able to put the herd on early. Well, that's exactly what happened. Hilton went out with 61 points in the first kilometer. There's Cassandra Gudos from Saratoga. Hilton went out hard, put up 61 points in that first kilometer, and took a huge lead and never gave it up. Yeah, it was a minute and 15 seconds or so slower the winning time this year than last year. That's a testament to these conditions. They are brutal. Pretty darn good for a California girl. Doesn't see mud like this much. A uh, great race. How was it for you? Thank you. It was definitely different. Um, the footing was, I mean, coming into it, that's what I was most worried about. And, you know, I, I had good reason to be. <laughs> but um, it was it was a lot different, but it was, it was fun. I mean, uh, we heard Shalane Flanagan speak yesterday, and she said, you know, weather like this and um, <laughs> um, conditions like this should 
should be or can be a positive, you know, um, distraction. And so that's kind of what it was. It was fun and um, definitely hard, but um, something new and it was fun. I'm happy with how I did. Well, there is your winning Hilton Cross Country Squad. Third time is the charm against Saratoga. Allison Sawyer in eighth led the way. Amanda Griggs took one for the team on crutches all week, came home and ran 12th out there today. Phenomenal performance. Saratoga, 27 points back in second. Here's Shalane with our champions. So exciting today. How do you guys feel? Was it pretty tough out there? We're overwhelmed. It was all worth it. I don't care how muddy or tired I am. Did you guys know where you were on the course? Could, could you hear each other? Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. I heard over the announcements yeah. that we were winning by a little bit, and I'm like, oh my god, I gotta pick it up. Yeah, I knew we just it was a shit. So you guys just ran tough, stuck together. Well, you guys did an amazing job, and congratulations. Thank you so much. I'm not sure if they're they're happy. They wonder. Just happy it's over. And one of these years. I think it's actually going to be dry and fast, and then we'll see how the California kids can do. The number one girl for Hilton Cross Country all season, Amanda Griggs, was nowhere near the top of her game. She finished 12th. She could have easily been in the top five, but that's even more of a testament to kind of performance that her teammates showed out there today in winning this national title. Definitely. Um, as we talked to the girls earlier, they all just knew they were going to have to step up today, and she still was their second runner today for that team. Um, so she's an extremely tough girl, and I think the girls just, you know, her teammates stepped up and, you know, brought it home for her. You know, on the boys side and the girls side what we had was teams that were not ranked number one in their region winning the national title what's that tell us it tells us that's that's why we run the race tony and this is a long time into the season very late in the season for high school running most of these teams have had their state meet four weeks earlier but the teams today saratoga on the boys side hilton on the girls side they stayed together they handled the conditions better than anyone else and they came away champions you know, for most of these kids, this will be the athletic achievement of a lifetime, something to remember for their scrapbooks. Others, it's the beginning of a championship career. But only in its second year, the Nike Team Nationals has already developed a legacy of its own, and that is stimulating the interest of cross-country running throughout this nation. Now for Bob Kennedy and Charlene Flanagan, I'm Tony Rambis. We'll see you next time. Thanks for joining us at Portland Meadows.